<laughs> Hello, welcome to Lexicopolio. Uh, this is a great honor for us because uh, Jeremy Banks is with us. Uh, I think he's going to introduce himself better than I will. No, no, no. That's about it. <laughs> so, a very warm applause for Jeremy Banks. Thank you. And this is working. If I do, oh yeah, that's working. Hello. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Diamantis. Yes, I'm Jeremy Banks. Thank you for coming. Um, I'll, uh, I'm going to do a little talk about cartoons, uh, about my work in newspapers, uh, about my uh, about a book that I've um, got out called Frankentruc, which is uh, in this shop. Um, it's also in English. It's called uh, called this Franken Franken thing. Yeah, look, there's two copies. There you go. Look, thank you, Diamantis. See the two side by side cousins. Um, um, uh, so I shall be talking a little bit about how cartoons work, how I work, um, showing you some cartoons on the screen if I can work this out, and um, it, uh, you can ask questions. Maybe do questions later. You ask questions if it's something you don't understand or want to know more about. You know, do do get in there. Um, so obviously, here is a cartoon, one of mine. Um, this is about uh, I, I, uh, people getting a lot of death threats on um, Facebook, Twitter. Um, I sort of, uh, what I do is I, I send in three ideas. This is for the Financial Times. And I have to send in three rough ideas and they'll take one of those ideas. And this is the one I took. Actually, I was quite surprised they took this one. Um, it was a bit dark and often they don't like things that are quite that dark. Uh, I, I, I had it in mind, a sort of subtext to this that um, the death threats he was getting were actually from his wife, but he doesn't um, he doesn't know it. Um, let me let me now see if this now. Oh, uh, yep. Okay, this is um, this is about. Um, oh, let me just see if I've got that absolutely right. Yep. Okay. This was w um, when these are all re relatively recent. This is when Twitter. Um, decided they weren't going to have uh, paid advertising, political advertising. So I, uh, I mean, this is fairly straightforward. I took their emblem and played around with it a little bit. Um, and that's kind of how it works. Um, when I sit down to work, um, well, it's sort of difficult to explain because I'm being um, a rational human being explaining to you things. But when I'm in the state of work, I'm not actually that, it's not a rational space that you work in. You, you sort of go into a, a sort of a childlike state. I mean, it's, well, I started drawing from a very early age and it hasn't sort of moved on from there. So it's, very, it's actually very hard to describe how you get into this. So you look at the world as if you've never seen it before. So everything is, uh, um, it's quite therapeutic. Everything is kind of fresh and new, um, although you've got a deadline biting at you where you have to get ideas. So it sort of helps to look at things in a completely new light, as if you have no idea what they are. Um, a sort of state of sort of innocent ignorance, but at the back of your mind, there's also the experience you have of working on these things. So in this instance, I took the emblem, the very simple emblem, and just adjusted it in, in, in that way. Um, let, me, uh, let me find you another one here. Uh, Yes, yes, it is. In, in, it, yeah, it is sort of. I, I mean, a strange thing is, is that the, the, the simplest idea are, drawings are often the hardest to do. <laughs> um, you know, if this, it, I didn't want it to look too, I didn't want to directly just simply copy the symbol, but I wanted to give it a sort of cartoony feeling, but whilst it's being recognized, well, it had to, it has to fit into the space because you've got to watch out for the negative space around it, it has to sit in the frame, and, and it's an awkward size as well. It, it, it's just dictated by the needs of the newspaper. So it fits into one column in the newspaper. And it, it just needed to be placed sort of, I hope, in the right place. And the more you look at it, it's very difficult when you're drawing something, the more you look at it, the more you, you don't know if you're getting it right or not. It, it, it just becomes a very difficult thing. But I think it kind of worked out, and it looks cartoony of what is already a logo, and just that little beak with the thing keeping it. So I, I, I didn't want it to look too much. I didn't want it to look like it was drawn by a computer. That's for sure. 
So I wanted the line to, sometimes I put a tiny little bit of wobble in the line and if I have, a, sometimes if I, have, if I make a mistake in the drawing, sometimes I kind of like to keep it. I kind of like the mistakes. It depends which mistake you have. Um, um, so this is quite a difficult drawing to do. It doesn't look like it. And, it's, and of course, it's all meant to look simple and very easy. That's the other thing. If, if something looks complicated and difficult, you failed. Um, and th these sorts of things are very difficult to do. Uh, I, I once had to do a drawing of Blenheim Palace, which is, uh, you know, this huge manor house, this huge stately home. And that's really easy, because you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. Because it's all got little nooks and bits and pieces sticking out of it. You put one more extra, it doesn't really matter. I even had a false line in it, which I forgot to take out. And it was fine, it just went through, everyone loved it. You know, it's, but this kind of thing, you get one thing wrong and it just looks a bit, a bit out of place. Um, let me find another one, this is. Hang on, it takes a little while to get these. Cause, oh, hang on. This is, um, this is about, a lot of these cartoons are going to be about Brexit, I'm afraid. You know, the, pro uh, the problem being that um, there's been tr they've been trying to find solutions to the border problem in Northern Ireland and Ireland, which the Brexit people never thought about. Um, they never give it any thought at all. They, never, they just weren't interested in that. And now suddenly it came back. And they had this stupid idea about not having a border, but having custom posts before the border. And it's just... We're not run by very bright people, yeah? So, and it's difficult, I, mean, I was talking about this earlier, that they do such stupid things. You know, I'm the one who's supposed to be coming up with silly things, but they do it ahead of me, you know? They're always one jump ahead of me in the stupidity stakes. So it's actually quite difficult to look at this, but I, I just wanted to sort of do something that showed up how, how crazy their ideas are. Um, and I, I quite, I, quite you know, I thought, okay, you know, my, I had a horror. They might think this was a good idea. Uh, they might steal it. Um, it shows the absurdity, though. It shows the yes. Absurdity of the yes. Yeah. But this is the difficult thing to show the absurdity in a situation that's always absurd, already totally, totally, way more absurd than it has any right to be. You know. So, what, I, what, uh, you know, what you want to work on, really. Um, you know, if I if, if I, I do uh, I do other jobs as well. I mean, you know, I, I I do these for the I'm a freelance. I don't work for the Financial Times. I ought to explain to you a little bit how that works. Some people work for a newspaper. That's their job. They're nine to five. But I'm a freelance. I have no contract with the Financial Times or with anybody. So I sell my wares. I mean, they have a regular space for me that they need filling. Otherwise, they'd have to write a bit more of text, and they don't want to do that. You know, they want that. And they feel that they need a cartoon, thank heavens. So, I, um, you know, I sell them all up, and I get commissions. People commission me, they want me to do a job. And the worst commission you can have is when someone says, you're going to really love this, this is really, really funny. <laughs> and obviously, if it's funny already, what do you expect me to add to it? Um, some of, the, some of the best jobs I've had have been of things that are just quite boring. I mean, sort of... Um, I mean, I've done things for financial matters, but that's too boring. But um, th things like uh, computer parts and stuff, you know, where there's no humour, then it's your job to dig it out, you know? Um, sorry, can you understand? Je, je parle en français un peu? No? C'est bien? Oh, c'est bien. Um, so, you know, sometimes I get a commission where they want me to do a Christmas card or something and they, they always tell you everyone's mad in their office and everyone's really, really funny. And uh, that doesn't give me anything. I just want to know the very simple thing, you know, something, take something out. But you, you need structure. I think that's the thing. You need to have structures in place that you can play around with. So at the moment, the political situation is very structuraless. It is... Nobody, well, nobody knows what's happening. I mean, I'm talking about Brexit in particular here. Um, uh, people have asked me, you know, coming from the UK, people have said, what's happening with Brexit? What is going to happen? And I have to say, I don't know. But nobody knows. The Prime Minister doesn't know. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know the deal. He doesn't understand the deal that he's supposed, the withdrawal deal that he wants to get through. So 
it, when, when things are fluctuating like that, it's very difficult to work with them. I mean, work, working on, 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 on Franken thing, on Franken trick, there's a very simple, basic premise of, um, a, 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 you know, it has a structure to it, and you can play around. That was the fun of it, trying to get something out of this, this, this structure. But it's often very challenging to get something out of something that's already like a, a kind of a liquid that falls through your fingers. Um, and, and, and when things don't really obey rules that they should do. Um, this was um, uh, uh, Trump um, saying there was going to be a civil war uh, a while back if he got impeached, um, which is obviously not a, a sober thing to say in any way. Um, with this one, I wanted to bring it back and just point out these people are not... We, we get this with Brexit, that, that we, we continuously get told that if we don't get Brexit through it in October or Mar March, October, whenever, now it's January, if it doesn't happen, then there's going to be rioting in the streets. And uh, we, have a, we have a politician in the UK called Marc Francois who talks complete rubbish, and he said every, the country's going to explode if we don't get this through. But you know, I wanted to point out, actually, most people are not going to actually do anything at all. They're going to do what they usually do, sit down, complain, watch television, play on their phones. Um, I, 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 this, this is this supposedly set in the future when people are doing reenactment, but they're, you know, so they're dressed in old fashions. So this could be set 100 years from now. Um, and I wanted to just bring it down and make uh, destroy the heroics of it. And uh, and I hope he reads the Financial Times. I always often have this fantasy that he might have the Financial Times on his desk, and someone has to put a coffee cup on top of my cartoon so he doesn't see it. Um, but I, I know that British politicians certainly read them, um, or or pretend they don't. Um, I'll get, uh, and this this was um, this is Trump uh, when he was particularly screaming his head off about. So I think he, he had shouted at um, a correspondent, uh, uh, an interviewer at a press conference who was just trying to ask him some normal, ordinary questions. And I think he was in the presence of the Finnish prime minister, I think. Yeah. And um, clearly he was spooked because he'd been asked about the Ukrainian thing. This is when the Ukrainian thing was just starting out. And he, um, I see him as a small boy who just gets scared very easily. So he did what any small boy would do and say, don't talk to me, talk to someone else. And, and he was screaming as heaven. And I, and I just kind of like wanted to have a visual play with that of just with all his screaming and all his bluster, actually there's just a small boy crying for help within the, uh, that empty sort of vacuous space that, that is his soul. Um, and, and, and you know, with with visuals, you can do that kind of thing, which you can't necessarily do in the in in the written word. Um, and it was quite difficult. It was again that was quite a difficult one to draw because it's very very simple. Um, let me bring the next one up. Oh. oh, this is a recent one. This is the um, McDonald's. Yeah, the McDonald head of the CEO of McDonald's. Did you get that story? He was dating um, a, a, a subordinate. And he had to leave his job because it was, and I just had this take on it, this sort of creepy take that so this guy, again, I quite like to have a subtext on these things. I quite like the idea of some CEO hanging around in someone else's office in another building. And you just have a, a mental picture of what that would be and how that would work out. And just him looking very forlorn. And there's this secretary at the back. Um, clearly he hasn't asked her for a date because she works in his company. Um, I, um, I like, yeah, they don't know they're in a cartoon. That's very important. Yeah. It's not funny for them. I, there are, there are some people who like to have cartoon, everyone laughing and smiling. There's a kind of school where you have little lines coming out, little sweat marks where people are agitated and, and I don't like that. I, I always liked the films of uh, Buster Keaton from a very young age, and everything's kind of played down, and just uh, these people, it, it's, it, you know, the, the humor comes out if, if people are deadly serious about the situation that they're in. It's not funny for him, it's not, and, it's not, and it's not funny for this guy who's having to listen to this, and, and we, we sort of, 
get this through him and we wonder what his react he's quite key to this what's his reaction to this what does he take home from this and i quite like cartoons to have these are sort of slices of a moment so you've got the before the moment and after and i quite like the thought of hanging in the air is how does this guy react to this guy and what's their relationship what happens next? I, I quite like that sort of moment. It makes it sort of alive, um, and everything is very, very serious. This is not a you know this is a serious workplace, and it so you can bring out the tension because the humor that the, the, the humor the, the humor is a kind of a release of tension, and if you can make the situation tense and very sort of conflicted, then hopefully it makes it funnier. Um, I, I quite like that's that's quite a recent one. They're all quite recent these cartoons because um, I wanted them to be because sometimes I, even I forget what they're about after a while when, when the story is. Um, oh yeah, um, this is about the ongoing situation. We the, the, there's been a report into interference in our electoral system by Russian with Russian money financing it and um, our prime minister. Um, uh, Boris Johnson is practically, I think, on his own. I think it's just down to him, well, down to his advisor, Dominic Cummings, who actually runs our country at the moment. They are stopping the publication of this report, or delaying it. Well, delaying it is the word, but stopping it. Um, uh, uh, well, because of the election. And... Um, this has generally been sat on. It's been proven that there's been interference. It's been proven that the Leave campaign overspent. I mean, that's been established. That charge has been established. There's great that we know that Cambridge Analytica, this company, was playing around with people's Facebook information, was targeting vulnerable people with um, um, uh, with lies. People, they found out about people's likes and dislikes through their Facebook pages and targeted them mercilessly. I mean, there are stories of Facebook adverts for pro-leave campaign telling vulnerable elderly people that the e European Union was going to ban tea. Uh, and I'm, I'm really serious. I'm not, I'm not, that's not me being funny. That is actually... See, this is, what, this is the problem we have. You know, if I say something like that, it sounds silly and funny, but it is actually true. <laughs> so... This report has been sound, and I want to try and think of a very visual way of... I, I like to do cartoons with no captions, if possible, because I just kind of like to get that visual thing over. And just this, this idea of... Because we know the situation... We know what that word is. We know that that word is Russian, but it's being edited, redacted. Um, and I was quite pleased to get that in because it's not, it's not being reported a lot. Uh, we, we, we have a very good journalist called Carol Cadwallader in the United Kingdom who has been pushing this issue. And the, um, uh, it, she, she has never been interviewed on the BBC. She's ne we have a very important political program. Well, there's a, a kind of panel program of people ask, answering questions uh, called um, uh, uh, Question Time. She's never been on that. Nigel Farage has been on it dozens of times. Her, her views are not listened, and she's a very serious journalist who has looked into this almost single-handed. I mean, she has assistants and stuff, and there's other people who've done things, and she has been marginalised. People don't want to think about this. I think, I think, you know, even MI6 don't want to think about this. I don't think they liked the idea that they've been played. It's that serious, but clearly, with an election, you know, no elections are safe anymore, uh, anywhere, uh, not just in the UK, but anywhere because of this th th this issue. So I was quite pleased to um, to get that out there and uh, to have that seen. Um, no one from Vote Leave has wanted to buy the original of the cartoon. Um, oh, this is um, Extension Rebellion. Um, there were uh, a lot of arrests on a, on a march, and I just wanted to, um, well, just, uh, you know, just illustrate the fact that... You know, that <laughs> This poor guy in a cell and the floodwaters are coming up because I wanted to just get over the idea that whether you arrest people or not, it's not going to make any difference. It, it, it isn't going to stop climate change as a real issue. And you, know, you can pretend it's not happening. You can blame Extension Rebellion for their 
tactics and you can do all of that, but it doesn't alter the fact that there is clearly a very big emergency at hand and uh, something needs to be done. And um, I wanted to sort of illustrate that. Um, again, it's very serious for this guy. He's just sitting. I like, I like people to be just sort of sitting there somehow accepting their fate in some terrible way. Um, I didn't want him to be reacting. I mean, really, he should be standing up on it. Maybe he will do, but that comes after. That's the sort of the after bit. At the moment, he's just absorbing the situation, as we kind of all do. We all just have to live with this and just sort of, okay, what do we do next? Um, we don't know. That's, in, that, that's, that's after this cartoon. Um, yes, I just like... Yes, I quite like that sort of... Because it's, it, it's sort of trying to capture that moment. He's clearly going to do something at some point. There's going to be a reaction, but he is just taking... That, that moment is frozen. He's frozen in that moment. Um, and that's, that's sort of, you know, that, there's a sort of tension in there. I mean, it's all about getting that tension. Um, let me uh, get another one up. So it takes just a little while. Cause this is actually a film. This is actually a video that Diamant made. Ah, here we, have a, we have a restaurant chain in the UK called Pizza Express. And it's going bust. I mean, it's, this was quite a Financial Times story because they like stuff about... I don't do much of... I mean, it's the Financial Times, but I don't do much about finance because I, I don't know anything about it. But this was quite a big story because it's a big chain where people go with their families... And I just wanted to, something to illustrate just, you know, bloop, this awful moment. Again, he's deadpan, he's not reacting. He's going to probably peel this stuff off his face. But it's all going terribly wrong. Um, I, I, had, I, saw, I was advised, I sort of cheated a bit, because I, I, I wanted to make a picture that was, I, so I put this, uh, these logs, you know, this sort of log file. But Pizza Express don't really do that. And I kind of knew that, but I, I still wanted to make it into a pitch. I quite, I quite like the idea of the fire burning. It sort of raised the temperature, well, you know, on the thing. And a, and a number of people wrote and say, no, they don't do it like that. <laughs> this is the feedback that you get. Um, but it's quite, nice. it's quite nice to show the process. You know, you see you've got the fire, you've got the ingredients, you've got this, and then you've got the finished product. He's, it tells a story. Everything has to tell a story. There's just a little story there to sort of root it in some kind of reality, despite the fact that I brazenly put the, 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 the logs there, which wouldn't be there. Um, but I just thought it made it a better drawing. Uh, it was just more fun to do. And then this is um, <laughs> fairly self-explanatory. Um, you know, there was this big win on the Euro millions, and I just, you know, we have a lot. We have a lot of Brexit people who, uh, you know, talk the talk. I mean, Farage himself, he talks the talk about Brexit and going out, but he's got his kids of German passport so that he can, um, you know, get get into the get get the get get move free movements. You know, for the EU. And and there's loads of DUP, uh, um, um, uh, Democratic uh, 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 Unionists, so-called, uh, who are staunch nationalists. You know, they want to be British. They want to think of themselves as being British. But they're all getting themselves Irish passports. Which is, you know. So... I just quite like the idea of his disappointment. I, I never have people smiling in my cartoons. Sometimes I had someone complain to me about it. Said, "Please have someone smile in your drawings. I only have them smiling if they're doing something, if they're getting something hopelessly wrong and they don't know it. Um, if they're deluding themselves. But no one's. I don't like people being happy in my drawings. In fact, I, I've even stopped putting mouths. I, she hasn't got a mouth. I, I, if the person who isn't talking, I don't even put a little line there because I didn't. Even, they're sort of mute." Um, and he's just got this really unhappy expression. We well, don't quite sure what he's going to do. What's he going to do with the money? And he's obviously clearly a well. You know, he's got Brexit on his T-shirt. Clearly, this is a fanatic. And he's in this terrible. He should be happy, but he's not. But why? Why did he even go into the lottery in the first place? Would he have been happier if he'd lost? Um, and I just quite like drawing people dressed up silly like that. And, uh, and again, her reaction is important. She's kind of key to this. She sort of anchors it. And we, we view it through her. 
was sort of going through her her eyes. And I always have people wearing glasses, which is probably because I wear glasses. But I, I, I like not being able to see people's eyes because I just like them kind of as blank as possible. They're just there to be used by me for, for comedy. <laughs> um, and I just, I quite, I quite like to make her as static as possible. But, but there's a kind of a tension there because clearly she's been living with this guy for a long time and he just does these stupid things. And it's, you just wonder when she's going to scream or just run out the door and into the street and leave him. No? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That couple is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because there's, there's that kind of tension. They don't have children. They just have themselves. They just have each other. Um, yeah, now those are my sort of standard couple. And he always has that little moustache. Um, yeah, yeah. Again, there's that, that sort of tension between the two of them that, that runs in the number. I don't know if there are any more with, the, with, with them in here. Um, I do use them a lot. Um, uh, well, he's... Well, I'm not sure. He, I, I did a book of cartoons called The Many Deaths of Norman Spittle. And he kind of is Norman Spittle, but he's also not. And then, I, and then I did a book of cartoons called The Dewsburys, which was about a couple. So they're sort of called The Dewsburys as well. Um, uh, which is strange. I chose the name at random from, uh, fr from, a, from a, uh, an atlas. Dewsbury is a town in north of England. And, it, and then I found out afterwards that my family came from Dewsbury. I had a long, long line of people coming from Dewsbury. I have no idea about that before. So it's a kind of strange thing. Um, so, yeah, they have a... But they're kind of... I, they don't have names, really. They could be absolutely anybody. So I kind of hesitate to give them a name, in a way. It sort of spoils it if they have a name or an identity. They're just, they're, they're just vessels. They're just empty vessels that are just there to be used. As, as, as mouthpieces for whatever. They, they don't live really. They don't have real existences in a strange way. Although I do kind of know quite a bit about them in a strange way. Um, I mean, it says they're sort of, they're me, really. You know, aspects of me. Um, with this one, I, I put, sometimes, occasionally, I like to play around with a bit of colour because you can do that now. You can't, couldn't always do that, but sometimes, I did, I did one with uh, Trump with a red tie and I, I had his tie running through, he was sitting in a tank and he had his tie running through the gun, barrel of the tank and it sort of flopped dangling outside. I think he wanted to do some kind of military uh, parade for, for, for um, Independence Day or something and they stopped him from doing it. So a little bit of colour can work. So with this one, you know, I was playing on this, this you know, when, when someone's in prison, obviously they have this, these little lines and they tick them off for every five days and it was about the, um, the Catalan politicians who were... Uh, uh, condemned to really long sentences by the Spanish courts. And having the colour just, you know, had the little Catalan flags there. So um, that visually, that was, that was quite fun to play around with. That was just a little bit different. But I think I've only used colour twice ever in 30 years in the Financial Times. This was, this was one of them. Um, let me see what we've got here. I can't remember what these are myself. Oh, this, this, this was Trump pulling the Americans out of Syria. And it was just, um, yeah, I mean, just very self-explanatory. Just a very simple way of getting the idea of this. This, uh, this, this guy's kind of like out of Sergeant Bilko. I always like Sergeant Bilko, so he's got that kind of feel about him. And this just this visual. I did this broom just brushing away uh, the American president, just leaving whatever horror to come. Um, because of his completely, you know, abandoning the Kurds to their fate, the Turkish, uh, um, to, 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 to whatever the Turks will do. Um, and I just thought it was a simple, again, very downplayed. And this is such a simple gesture, and the, the idea of the broom just brushing away. Um, just, just wanted to keep it simple, downplayed. Um, just a very, very, very simple thing. And not, and this guy's just doing his job. Actually, I've given him an eye. I've given him an eye. He's looking a bit kind of, I don't know, deadened. Um, so um, yeah, yeah. That, that that was just a very, very, very simple one. Um, let's see the next one. 
Oh, this was yeah. This was about the England England Bulgaria drawing and uh, a, a football match where there was a lot of racist harassment of you. Did you get that? I don't know if you got that story here, but there was uh, they had stopped the game and uh, and and there were a lot of very self righteous people in the UK complaining about you know foreigners being racist. You know, you know and it was they were sort of pointing how dreadful Bulgarians are and this and la 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 la. And how, hang on a minute, you know, yeah, okay. Ignoring the fact that there is plenty of racism in the UK and we are going, I mean, there are, I don't think all Brexit people are racist. I would never say that, but I do think all racists are Brexit people. Um, so we have our problems, big problems in our own country. So it, it just became a bit convenient to just point the finger. Although I do think what the Bulgarians did was terrible. It just became rather convenient to point the finger in one direction. And uh, this got, I, mean, I got quite a bit of support in Bulgaria for this one, actually. I think it got reprinted in a Bulgarian, it's being reprinted in a Bulgarian news, um, uh, satirical magazine. Uh, they, they, they quite like the point, of, you know, the point that I, I made, well, no, not all, you know, racism happens everywhere and xenophobia. Uh, again, I quite like to have people dress very ordinarily. I dress people quite old-fashioned. Nobody really wears ties like that with a with a casual, with a jacket like that. Um, but they used to. So I think I, I go back to my uh, dyes when I was a child. I think I picked. I just like that kind of thing. So these are quite old-fashioned people. They're not of today. They're sort of timeless by virtue of being um, uh, not of their time at all anymore. Uh, and I, I, for some reason, I just quite like to do that. Um, let's see what we've got. Let's see the next one. Um, this is. <laughs> so you know what this is about. Um, this crazy, crazy, crazy. This is this is the thing that makes life so difficult. How how do you? A lot of what I do, and in all of my cartoons, not you know, is is it's all about processing. You know some. And but when when the crazy you know the very idea that you would send a letter and not sign it and think that you'd achieve something is it's just so extraordinarily stupid it, you wouldn't get away with that if you wrote that in a book you know if you wrote that for a television show for a Saturday, you would say well no one would dream of doing that and then then you're faced with the fact that someone has done it so we all have to live with this um, again a very simple drawing I had a I had a bit of a, um, I, I, Again, always the, the, the hardest drawings are the simplest ones. I mean, there's, there's really nothing to this. There's not even a person in it. And I, I quite like to have drawings where there's nobody in it. Sometimes. And you, you kind of place him in the chair and you imagine him uh, far uglier than, he, you know, than I could draw him. Um, my editor actually made a point. I, I've, no one's ever complained about this. This is actually a bit wrong because she said, and she's very, she's okay, my editor. She, I've had some terrible editors. Editors can be really a nightmare. The problem is, I don't know if it happens here, but in the British press, the people who tend to get higher up the chain are very literal and very literary people. They work with words. They're not interested in images. They're not, they don't think about that kind of thing. So I've had editors who just don't understand the drawing that they're looking at. And frankly, they don't have much of a sense of humor either. I've had... Um, on, on, on more than one occasion, I've had an editor look at a drawing and ask me, it seriously asked me, who is talking in this drawing? And of course, the answer is the one with his mouth open. Uh, I had to explain that to two editors I've had. Um, my, my editor's not like that, but she's not, her visual sense is not perfect. Okay, I mean, I'm not going to be critical. She is actually really good. But uh, she said to me on this one, she said, you're going to have to put the pen over on the other side, right? Because he's right-handed, okay? So we had a bit of a to and fro about this. And, um, oh, she also asked me, because I had, originally it was Prime Minister. She said, could you make it UK Prime Minister because of an in it's an international paper? So they might not have been, I'm, you know, okay, fine. So I said, let's make it Boris Johnson instead, then that's simple. And then, so I had to argue the point that actually for the composition, you know, if I, <laughs> put that over there, then that would move the paper over. And I, I, I wanted, for some reason, I, well, I think it makes it funnier, and this sounds strange, but it makes it funnier if the paper is intact. You've got to see all of the paper. And actually, I think you do have to, because otherwise there might be some, if that was cut off there, you know, you might think, well, there might be something written here. 
he might have actually put some pen and ink there. You might think that. You might not even know you were thinking it, but it just get you, you. You must have anything that gets in the way at all of the image. So I over, you know, you might argue I'm overthinking this a little bit, um, but you have to kind of go into everything has to be considered because it's, it, you know, you mustn't have anything in there that's not to do with the joke, with the story. Nothing must get in the way. So you have to consider these things. But anyway, we, I did have to. I, I, this is all done by email because no one ever phones it and talks to you anymore. So I had those long emails about, hang on a minute. And no one's actually said it's on the wrong side, you know. So I got away with that one. But uh, I was quite happy with that one because the situation was so crazy. I think it's, I'm trying to bring things back to the rational and say, hang on, look, everybody, this is mad. This is completely mad. And hopefully, I, I hope that came off in that one. Um, it took ages to draw because it, it really is so simple. It's... Um, it's the Mark, you know, Mark Twain said, so, when he was writing a letter to someone, he says, sorry, sorry, this letter was so short, I didn't have time to make it, uh, 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 sorry, this letter was so long, I didn't have time to make it any shorter. Um, again, everyone very static. Um, he hasn't got a mouth because he's not talking. She hasn't got a mouth because she's not talking. Nobody's got eyes. Um, I wanted to, there's this big thing that people are talking, let's get Brexit done and get on with it. Let's get on with our lives. And I wanted to imagine, what does that actually mean? What are you going to do with your lives? A lot of these people don't have very interesting lives anyway. They spend a lot of their time hating foreigners and just being bitter. And so I just, I quite like that one. I thought it's, it's just, just sort of nailing it. They say, look, is this what you really want? You know, you want to just get on with your lives? What, what, what kind of lives have you have you got anyway um and i wanted to make i know hardly any furniture in the room um i, I didn't put anything in the window sometimes i put a, a, a little landscape some other houses in the window but i want to sort of sort of imply that there's nothing out there he they live nowhere i put some pictures on the wall to show there's a wall there but otherwise there's no other furniture I often put a little television set in the corner with a framed photograph on it to show. But I didn't want to think of him. He's not even watching television. He's just sitting, contemplating something. He's just living the rest of his life. He's moved on. Um, and that's what it looks like. And again, I, I, quite, I like to have her reaction. She's absorbing this, hopefully as we are, and thinking, what the hell does this mean? She's been living it for, with it for a while, uh, and she's got more used to it. Um, she's wearing. She's come from. She's got. I always. Know, she's the visitor because she's got the handbag, and the shoes, and she's got the coat. She lives here because she's wearing the slippers. He's wearing the slippers. I have slippers like this. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I have friends buy them for me. <laughs> So when they start to get worn out, they buy me a new one. I don't even know if I like them anymore, but I do actually have slippers like this. Um, and I always wear, I always have her in a polka dot. It's just what I do. I just, I like to keep as much, I, I, uh, the same as I can, just as you're not, it's not interfering with what's going on, you know. Uh, there was one time when the Financial Times complained that I'd done the same drawing twice in one week, but it wasn't the same drawing. It was a different drawing of the same thing. It was, my couple looking at each other in chairs, but they were dressed the same. I had to point out, no, it's a different drawing, but it is of the same kind of thing. Um, I have another one coming up. Oh, this this is about, uh, I was talking about Dominic Cummings. You know about Dominic Cummings here in, in yeah? He, he runs the country. He ran the Leave campaign. He was the one who brought Cambridge Analytica in to defraud the voters, to target them. And he is the advisor to the Prime Minister. Uh, but he basically tells Johnson what to do. Johnson hasn't got a clue what he's doing. Johnson wanted to be Prime Minister because he wanted to be made to feel important. He had no plan about what to do when he became Prime Minister. He just wanted that job so that he would become an important person because he, he just needs to be loved. Dominic Cummings... Is a, is, a, is a fan of Bismarck, and he just wants to destroy the country. Um, and in the, the media, uh, uh, when they talk of a source from the Prime Minister, it always means Dominic Cummings. So 
I just had this, and he seems to control everything. And I just had this, this is a very Church of England vicar kind of situation. This is very English. Um, and he says, you know, a source said, let there be light. Because Dominic Cummings is the source of everything. Um, again, people just watching. No mouths, no eyes even here, no glasses even here. Um, and this took quite a long time to get right, because the church ended up being too complicated, so I wanted to simplify the church down to a kind of basic thing. Um, I, thought I redrew this. Uh, in fact, they com the, the FT complained of where my drawing was, and I said, hang on, I've just redrawn it. Uh, they, they were getting a bit frantic, because I, I always work very late up to deadline. Um, that's a policy, because if I send my ideas in too early, they can get picky, exactly. <laughs> So, uh, can we do that? And if it's a bit close, I mean, they're pretty good to be honest, but sometimes I've had editors who are really difficult and they just think it's their job to mess my life around. So I have, uh, you know, I try to get as close to the wire as possible because they don't want to be working late. Um, but it can all go a bit wrong. I mean, the drawing doesn't normally take that long. I mean, my, it takes, a, the main thing is doing the, the ideas. That's the big thing. Um, once the idea is there, the drawing, you know, it takes half an hour to an hour. Uh, it, it depends what kind of drawing we're talking about. Again, if it's a very simple drawing, it takes a lot longer. Um, so um, uh, um, I, I always like to do that. But then, you know, if you, if you have to redraw a thing, if the drawing, sometimes a drawing either goes really, really well, really, really quickly, or it just is terrible and it takes ages. I mean, these can't take that long. They have to be simple. And if I've made my, I make my drawing simpler and simpler all the time. Um, having stuff on the on the web has actually taught me to keep my drawings up. The cartoons look quite good on um, on say on Twitter. Um, um, well, you, and well, you can you can see for yourself. You can follow me on Twitter if you like on at Banks Cartoons. Um, so I slip that one in, um, and uh, they look quite good. They're black and white, but 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 if you put too much detail in the back. Sometimes I do drawings with no background at all. I don't do that so much for the FT, but I do it for other places. So I've learned to sort of simplify, 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 simplify. And uh, actually, I think I overdrew that a little bit. I mean, I keep on looking at my drawings thinking, oh, I didn't, shouldn't have done that, shouldn't have done that. So, so I'm always trying to simplify. Um, it has a kind of a nice feel to it that works well. Um, I'm trying to see what the next one is. Oh, this is... Um, this is the potential trade deal um, that we want to have with Donald Trump, where he's made it quite clear he wants to strip the NHS and American companies will come in and we'll have an American system. And uh, oh, I've just noticed a mistake. I forgot to take, oh, that's a little, there's supposed to be a little line taken out there. Because what I do is when I draw these, I draw them, I show you some of the things I draw with actually. Um, these are actual the, the things I use. This is um, I just very simple. I just use one of these, which is just a projectile pencil, and then I have a series of these art pens. That are like they, these are like fountain pens. So there's extra fine, fine, and then there's a, a thicker one. I've been using these for years. I mean, I've, I've I've been using this one for God, I don't know how long, thirty years. I mean, it's. And I can, even, I can even feel the weight of them. If I pick the wrong one up without looking, I can feel it. It's really strange. I actually know these pens really, really well. Um, I have, uh, this, is, this, is, um, this is quite good. This, I use this for putting in um, coloring black. Um, but it's for, when I do bigger drawings, I used to do a lot of work for the um, um, uh, Nice Carnival. And they were quite big drawings, and it on A3. So I used to do them using one of these brush pens, and they're just really nice to use. And you you get it's a brush that just feeds the ink through. So it's like it's like um, it's like um, uh, you know like a, a fountain pen, but a, but a brush. And they just I don't use it that much for this kind of thing, but they're quite nice to do. So you get this, and you can do a really thick line, but you can use these a very 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 fine line. So they're really nice. They're really nice to use. Um, so um, you do it on paper. You do it on it's all on paper, all on paper. I just I use very ordinary um, 
uh, a photocopying paper. Very, very ordinary. I don't. Yet, I, I, I deliberately because when I first started out, again, it's this thing of making drawings simpler and simpler and simpler. Um, the very first drawings I ever sent. This is a long time ago. Um, I put lots of little lovely lines in and beautiful little bits of stuff and little shading and it's all very nice. And then I'm very fine because I was a bit timid about spoiling the drawing. And then when it when it, this this drawing when I first saw it published. Half of this stuff had disappeared. It looked terrible. It looked awful. Yeah, the, the drawing that the, you're drawing for publication. You're not drawing to look at the thing. You know, it's it's it, the drawing itself is one step on the way to the final thing, which is actually as you see it in the paper or you know on a screen like this or on the um, on the internet. So uh, uh, I, I quite like paper that's not sobering because then you don't get such fine line. You don't. You can't be precious about it. You have to be quite bold and, and, and uh, yeah, so so my, my materials are just very, very, very simple. And then what I do is, um, oh, I, I mean, there's a rubber I use. Um, I clean this, so I clean, if there's anything I don't like, I clean them up in Adobe Photoshop. So it's a mixture of old style and, you know, technology, modern technology. And I, and see, I forgot what I would have, I would have used Photoshop to take that little, that's a, that's a little bin that people use for putting their cigarettes out before they go into, Often you see people smoking outside uh, hospitals in England. Um, but I forgot. I've only just noticed that I forgot to take that little line out. Um, but I'll, I'll tidy up things, you know, in Photoshop. It's quite a nice way to do it. Or put a little bit of colour on, even if I need it. The, um, so that's, it takes a little time. Oh, here we go. And the, Oh, yeah, right. This is the, the California fires. Uh, obviously, this is all global warming, climate change. Uh, at the same time as the California fires were raging, there was a report about sea levels rising. So I, sometimes you just put the two things together in a very, very deep irony. With this one, I was a question of how much fire to put. I mean, if I'd done this drawing 20 years ago, I'd have put lots of, I'd have put a landscape with trees or something. And, but I just thought it sort of shot out at you more if there's just a wall of fire. On the other hand, the only problem is I thought, well, would these people really still be standing there? But, but that's sort of, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought we well, have to have somebody there <laughs> saying something. I, I thought of having them running away, but uh, I, I th in some ways it's quite, they're just standing there watching and they shouldn't really be doing that. And in a sense, I thought that mirrored what we're all doing. You know, we should all be taking this a lot more seriously, myself included. Um, and we're all standing here watching fires. So I thought it sort of summed up the way things are. Um, it took me I, I, it took me a long time. You can, you can see the different pens I used in this. I used the fine pen, well, the thicker pen for these lines, which is the one I usually use. And I thought I'd just put some finer lines to give it, send it backwards. And I, I, and I, I really hesitated over that because I am trying to simplify all the time, but I think it came off. Uh, it's always very tricky with things like that, but I think it kind of worked. Um, I hope it did. But the, these are the sort of because I haven't got much space in the in the, I, you, I I I try to make everything count, everything work, and so I don't like to have oh that's it that's that's that that's the lot. Um, I don't like to have um, you know to keep it as simple as I can. So um, well, that's that's the scans. We'll be back to the back to the original one. Uh, oh, it's going to run through on its little film now, so you're, you're going to get fed up with these. Um, if you've got any questions, I'd be very happy to answer them. Anything you want to know about the way it works, what I do, um, please, please do ask. Frank and Tweet. Mm. Well, before Frank and Tweet, there was Frank and Thing. And this was just, I wanted to write a book. I just decided, here it is. Here it is, in fact, Frank and Tweet. So you've got the two here. So... It's a very long story. So there's the two. This is the English version, sorry, English version and the French version. So I just wanted to write a book. And I'd written some stuff before. And I thought, well, I thought I wanted to write a horror book, horror comedy. I decided that. Um, yeah, if I prop that up like that. Um, and I'd always liked the Frankenstein films, universal Frankenstein films. 
uh, I used to watch them as a child. My mother was very um, keen on these things. Too. She, let, she used to let they used to show them on television late at night in the UK, and she used to let me stay up late to watch them. And um, so I really loved them, and it was something that's kind of brought us together. She always loved these things, so it just seemed like an idea. And it, uh, you have to hand on who. What am I going to do? I, I, I got this idea for the character. I got the idea for him pretty quickly. He was just this rat or something or other that had Frankenstein bolts in it. And I thought, I quite like the look of that. that. That was okay. I was quite happy with that. And I had to work out who he was and what he was and why he was. And this was sort of where the story began. And I got this, we have cats, we have lots of cats and they're sort of always trying to attack things. They fail miserably. Um, we, have, we have one cat uh, who keeps on attacking my socks. I leave sock, my socks to put in the washing machine in a big basket. And every night she gets hold of my socks and she leaves them at the foot of the stairs and she meows at us at about three o'clock in the morning to tell us that she's done this. And um, I thought at first that she was hunting them for food. as it were. I thought she thought she was giving us some food or something. But I think she might be thinking that her babies now I'm not quite sure why she's doing this but anyway and I suddenly got this thought of well what if Dr Frankenstein had a cat that brought things in from the garden dead things you know what would Dr Frankenstein do with that what would happen and then I linked it to the notion that the Frankenstein monster who is in the book he's already made him the Frankenstein monster is bored and he wants a friend. So you've got a kind of bride of Frankenstein kind of situation. But everyone's so, everyone knows what Dr. Frankenstein's about now. So like he can't find dead bodies because the, the cemeteries have been locked up and he can't even buy anything from the butchers because they don't want him to revive lamb chops or something. So he ends up seeing this cat, this, this thing that the cat's brought in and decides to make it into a friend for the monster. And that's when the story went. And, and of course, we've already got the cat. So what would the cat do? What would any cat do if its prey got brought back to life after it's killed it? Well, it would try to kill it again. And that's kind of where the story goes. And when Dr. Frankenstein goes off to another village, he has to go to another village to buy food because no one will sell him anything in his own village. This is when the story happens and we get a big long chase with uh, the cat trying to kill uh, Franken thing or 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 Frankentruck uh, or over and over again and uh, my agent took the story out I mean I got some interest from some some British publishers but in the end it came to nothing they they didn't do it but a friend of mine a friend of ours Sherif Ezeldin he liked the book and he had a friend has a friend uh, called Etienne Gomez who translated an Etienne well you'll see Etienne's name on the book and Etienne is, uh, was like the book as well, luckily. And he is a totally meticulous person. And he, I think, did a lovely job of translating the book. And then he did a great job of finding a publisher for it, which I wasn't expecting him to do. And he tried loads and loads of people. Eventually, uh, Lunatic um, took it on. And, and here we are. Here we are. Um, so without him, it wouldn't have happened. I, um, I mean, he has done an unbelievable... It, it was actually nice for me to read it again. I, you know, when you write a book, you know, you don't just write it, you read it a lot. So by the, by the end of it, you're kind of pretty fed up with it. It becomes a job of work. Um, I mean, the act of writing is sort of... Destroy, the act of destroying your enthusiasm for anything in a way. Um, but it was nice to reread it the way he did it. It sort of seemed to bring something fresh to it. I mean, all languages are different. They all work differently. And um, I, I find myself really, re I was really surprised when he sent me the first draft of his translation, how much I enjoyed reading it. I actually laughed and I was surprised. I, I, I thought, Christ, I read, I wrote this. <laughs> you know? So um, that's how it happened. That's basically the long story of how it happened. Um, mm? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pascal Goz is really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're a small publishing house, and they really, you know, they do a good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. Hmm. But he's but, but 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 because it's French, it is different. Just by but he's kept it the same, but it's different, and that's the weird thing about it. No, he hasn't gone off. He's been very very faithful. I mean, there are some things that he had to change. There's a certain word get word plate that you can't that just don't work, and and certain little concepts that just don't quite work. You have to kind of or, and and he, but he was always very solicitous he always spoke to me first about it and asked me is this all right and he worried about this and i said no no you go ahead you know, do what, i don't do what you like you know really I, I and he always stayed faithful to the story and in a strange way by doing that he made it more of himself he put he he, he brought a lot of himself into it and this, the way the sentence structure works it is different in french and and i mean some of the some of the descriptions there's some quite there's some quite revolting things in the book and I think it's funnier in French than it is in English because it's somehow French seems more slightly more refined in the way, and it's it's quite fun to have quite horrible things described in quite a almost genteel way. I thought he, that that sort of brought it up quite a bit. I thought that was quite funny. Um, I was very pleased with it. I thought I thought he did a lovely job, and I thought I think Lunatic did a lovely job bringing it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any, will uh, Will there be a Frankendruck? Do <laughs> I don't know. I have got ideas for other books. Um, uh, when, when the book was, uh, 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 I had uh, Egmont, very big publishers, in, you know, wanted to do it. They said to me, well, we want to do some sequels. They, so they got that far. I mean, they really were quite far down the line to bringing this out, to doing it. And it, it all fell apart at the last moment when the editor I had left his job. Uh, and then it all went dead. Um, these things happen. They they asked me. They said, and I hadn't thought of it. I just hadn't thought of it at all. And I thought, oh, all right. Um, and I came up with quite. I've got quite a few ideas for sequels. I, I mean, I mean, quite a few. Uh, but then I don't know if I'll ever have the time to do them because it is a lot of work. Um, but I'd like to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Referring to the to the main body of your sketches as well as Frank and Hook, mm. is there an interest for you know animation and animation? Uh, you know, venture. I have done animation. I have done, I did some films. I mean, there was, there was a book I was talking about called The Many Deaths of Norman Spittle. I did make a lot of films of, uh, of those uh, a while ago. Um, I, I might, I've actually got a project which I, w I'm, I got with a few producers um, for a, an animated TV series, but it's nothing like Financial Times. It's not Frankenstein or Frankentruck. It's a uh, it's a it's it's a kind of a adventure series. Um, uh, animation is very expensive, um, you know. Uh, I mean, there are people who do it at home. I mean, I don't know how to do that. You can do it on your computer. It's very time consuming, and I don't have the skills. And I I mean I mean it's the kind of thing one could learn, but I just don't have the time. That's the problem. I have so many things to do. I would like to. Uh, it's a very special skill animation. Um, when I worked on the films for the Norman Spittle book, I, you know, I wrote the jokes and I did the layouts. The layouts are the basic drawings. They were very, very, very short films. I mean, they were about 20 seconds long. They were just a joke. They were what they called interstitials, things that sort of fit in between other things. And they were, they were on MTV and they were on uh, various places. Um, so my, my basic layouts were, were sort of, Basically, the di I mean, I ended up directing the film. There was a director, but I kind of ended up directing by, by the fact they were so short. You know, they had to be done this way, that way. Um, there was not much room to play with. But I wouldn't have any idea how you animate something. I mean, some of the people, they did some beautiful animation in it, uh, which I couldn't begin to do. I have no idea how you do that. But, you know, I've never tried. So, but I don't think I'd be any good at it. Um, so, any more questions? Any more questions? Any more? Any more about cartoons or <laughs> pens or paper? Um, Are you going to bring out a collection of the, the cartoons, the empty cartoons, or well, just a book of the cartoons? People ask me that often, uh, but the FT never get their head around it, which is very strange. You know, for a, a big publisher. They publish a newspaper every day. No, I've asked them. I had a lot of people ask, and they, it's the office politics. They don't. They're not. They're not. Um, they're not set up for that kind of thing, and no one wants to take the responsibility. No, no one stands to gain enough from doing it within the the, the building, within the. Um, uh, I. 
Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the New Yorker. Well, yeah. No, no, I mean, I, I mean, newspaper, I mean, the Guardian do stuff, uh, but, but the Financial Times just don't see any interest. They're very literary people, very literal, literary. They, they don't think that way. I don't know. I think it's silly because I think it would work, and I've said that. And I have a lot of people ask me, you know. Um, I might ask them again, but I don't I don't know. Uh, yeah, all sorts. I mean, they've got all that stuff there. They could use it. Um it's not it's not my choice I mean I, I could self-publish but it's quite hard work you've got to get dist I mean the distribution would be fairly straightforward in a way because you wouldn't have to distribute it throughout the country you could just do London the city really and a few uh, um, say major cities uh, and you could sell it online I mean the FT could promote it online I mean I have, I have said all of this to them a number of times that they I had I had a production manager of the FT say, "Well, what's in it for me?" You know, yeah, I'm not paraphrasing either. <laughs> Literally, that's what he said. You know, I, so what do you do? You don't argue with that. Um, they don't think that way. It's a shame. I, I think it would be pity, but you know, be a little Christmas bonus. You know, yeah. any um, any other questions? Anyone? Have I explained everything there is to know about cartoons? Is there, are there, there are no doubts in your mind uh, of any sort? Have you ever had any objection or political mm. uh, reasons to one of your... Because there yeah. are comments on the Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, people have... Any yeah. So any, sorry? Experience. What, from the editorial? Yeah. No, if they if they if they run it, they run it. You know. Well, I, well, I mean, I do. Well, I suppose yes, I do get interference in as far as I send them three ideas, they take one, so they reject two. You know, they they reject two out of three. So that if you want to call, but they can't take everything. I mean, some people uh, just send in one idea, but that tends to be uh, it for the bigger editorial drawings, and there's, they they have this big thing about editorial freedom and stuff. They want to just. I, I I don't mind really having to choose. I I I don't mind that. I. I, and I don't mind being um, edited at all. I mean, they might, they might, you know, they might say, "Oh, could we? Uh, how could we do this or that?" And I, and they might be a good idea. If it's a good idea, I'll say yes. If it's a bad idea, like like with the uh, the the invisible ink, I'll say, "Well, hang on, that doesn't work so much." And you know, we we argue it, you know, and and they'll say, "Okay," but I mean, you know, it doesn't really happen. Most most of the time, they they they're not interested. They just want to get it over quickly, you know. So they say, "Yeah, okay, fine." Um, uh, but but and then then complaints. I mean, I've had through Twitter. You know, I, I sometimes people have been yeah quite quite angry with something that I've done. Yeah yeah. But I mean you know you know. Sorry. No, some people have taken things very personally. Yeah yeah yeah. No, they get very some you know. So there are people who you know some Brexit people or. Um, I, I did a cartoon about um, there was there was a story about um, uh, the lack of women in management at top levels of management in uh, well everywhere, everywhere it was about the UK but generally I think and um, I did a boardroom full of men um, and one of what I think the chairman of the board the person at the top end of the table says um, because uh, there was pressure to have more women in boardrooms and so the, this, the, the, the head, the CEO, or whoever, says to the rest of the board, uh, uh, "It might something like it might help us at this stage, gentlemen, if one of us started identifying as a woman, you know, because there's all this transsexual stuff going on." <laughs> and I was kind of trolled by transsexuals who thought I was it was a deeply offensive remark. And I, I have to say, for the life of me, I couldn't see why. Um, which I did say. I mean, I will, if people do that, I will answer them once. And then they're on their own, you know. I will. I did say, look, I, I have, I can't for the life of me see where the offence is in this. And then, you know, the way Twitter works, you get a whole lot of people piling in. So you, I ended up being in their Twitter feed, you know, because they copied ev everything goes to me. So I'm seeing these arguments going backwards and forwards, and people saying, "Oh, isn't he ghastly?" and like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, and I'm quite ridiculous. I, I, th I, I, I didn't, it didn't, it didn't. I, as I say, I really didn't understand why they thought it was offensive. But I won't, and, and they kept on going on at me, and I wasn't going to answer them anymore. I just say it once, and that's all they get. Um, I've had some Brexit people get quite annoyed with me. Um, I had, I, yeah, no, it happens, but, you know, what the hell.
you know, let them get on with it. I, I, as I say, I'm, I mean, there's one guy who's getting so angry with me. I, I, I did say to him, you know, you know, you're following me. I'm not following you. So you don't have to, you know, block me then. And he said, yes, I will. <laughs> and yes, he did. Well, and that was it. So, you know, it does happen. But I mean, it's only to be expected, you know. Some 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 things people have very strong feelings, and you know, I've never had death threats or anything like that. Oh, I'm not I'm not detached or, or at all. No, 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 no. I oh god, yeah, every day, right now, yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, I this is what I'm like when I'm angry, you know. Uh, no, I, I'm not detached. I'm not impartial at all. No, I, I don't think anybody is. I don't think how you can be. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very much against Brexit, for instance. For instance, let's just take that one subject. Uh, and I don't care who knows it. No, no, I'm, I'm, I don't have any duty to be impartial. Uh, I, I, know, I know I have an opinion about these things. And I know why I have an opinion about these things. Um, no, no, I, I, I mean, a lot of it... Um, no, I mean, I mean, here, I'm standing here now being a rational human being. You know, it's like I was saying at the beginning... This is not the state I'm in when I'm working on these things, you know. Uh, and there are times I really deeply resent having to think about Brexit. And I have you know, this thought going through my head of, you know, this is all unnecessary, you know. This doesn't have to be. You know, there are some things that have to be, you think, okay, you have a, but this does not have to be like this. Um, and I do get, I, and I do, um, uh, you know, I, I feel a responsibility to... Uh, well, there's a number of things. I, I feel a responsibility sort of publicly to um, make that clear and to show, to, to sort of highlight and illuminate how ludicrous this is. Um, I suppose possibly with the hope of sort of changing people's minds if they're in favour of Brexit. I, that's not going to happen. When I first started out, when I was very young, I, I, you know, I thought I could change the world with my cartoons. Everyone would suddenly see sense and the world would be a wonderful place. But of course, you get older and, you know, Pretty quickly, you know, you understand that I'm far too old to think that anymore, or anything like it. Um, but uh, uh, I think a lot of it is just to help me process my anger and fed upness. So, so if I'm not angry now, it's because I do these cartoons. At least I, I have, I have, I'm very lucky. I have a um, an outlet. You know, uh, not everyone has that, so I don't have to go storming around completely. But I do get very, very cross. I, I got, I got. Unbelievably cross that Nigel Farage has this uh, this radio show. He's on the radio one hour a day on LBC. It's just unbelievable, and he complains about not having enough not not, not enough people are listening to him. It's just, um, and, and he 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 told a direct lie on the radio, and I was just so angry. He said that he I mean, um, before the vote before the vote finished, he was on television as he always is, and he said that I heard him and I've seen it on video. He said that if the vote went, if he thought the vote was going to go, he said he thought the vote was going to go in favour of Remain. He said that because he was shorting the pound. He wanted to make money out of it. Um, and then he said that if, it, if, if the vote goes Remain, if it's only 50, if it's, he said this, he says if it's 48-52 in favour of Remain, we'll have to have another referendum. It won't be good enough. That's too close. And of course, and of course it went the other way. And he and someone phoned him up on his phone-in program and reminded him of that. He said, no, I never said that. I was absolutely incensed. <laughs> you know, some of these things, you know, I mean, he, it's not like I'm not used to Nigel Farage lying on a daily basis, but that somehow just really starts. So, yeah, no, I, 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 I do get very angry about it. And, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Angry I am. <laughs> with, with regard to the little sketches you did for our little for oh, our yeah, event, yeah. Um, has ever you know Greece and the crisis inspired you? Oh yes, I, I have done a lot of stuff about the Greek crisis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I should have brought some scans of. I, I was in a bit. I, no, no, no. I mean, at the time, that was the big story. You know, now it's Brexit. Now it's us. It's our turn to be the ones that everyone's looking at. But yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, I did a lot of stuff because it was. Obviously, in the news um, a lot. So, if it's in the news, and you know, it's, the, the FT is an international newspaper, so I have to do stuff that everyone will know about. And you know, that, yeah, exactly. That's a prime story. I did a lot. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 I forgot that. Yeah. If it's been, I've never been to Greece. This is my very first time in Athens. I've been to Greece. I've been to the islands, but I've never been to Athens before. But I've drawn Athens quite a few times. But I do a cartoon Athens, you know. But I was surprised how 
in some ways, it's, I was saying to you, wasn't I? It's quite similar to my... I, I didn't realize the hills are so... You, you have cartoon hills here. Yeah? You do. You have cartoon hills. Yeah, little did do like that. Did do Yeah, little hills with the little buildings on top. I, I tend to do the Parthenon or a little temple or something. But you have maybe churches or a different... Kind, but you have my hills. And I, I was really surprised at that. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I have done that a lot, and, and um, hey, you know, if Greece comes back into the news for another reason, I'll be doing you again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where there where there is trouble, you will find me. You know, I mean, happiness writes white on the page. You know, where there's happiness, there's no room for me. You know, I just spend all my time reading about other people's unhappiness and drawing about it. Well, at Brexit is our unhappiness, of course. Um, so yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no, there's no, there's no, he, 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 the, the, uh, someone has to be unhappy for something to be funny, you know, now it's our turn, you know. Let's uh, give out a big applause for Jeremy Banks oh. here at Lexicovalio. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.